I still remember my first time there, I thought, okay, it's an endurance race, it's a bit longer than the normal six hour races, um, but I thought, okay, not so much different, but obviously it's completely different. Le Mans, um, obviously 24 hours, starts at three o'clock on the Saturday, finishes at three o'clock on the Sunday. Um, three drivers per car, so, you know, roughly eight hours each, but it doesn't always work like that. Um, one year I did 10 hours. For Le Mans, they're obviously going to be in the car for a long time, so it's about training them to be able to withstand the heart rate, uh, high intensities over a long period of time, the high heat uh, that they're subjected to, they, they can get cockpit temperatures of anywhere up to 50 degrees. They, they like to push me pretty hard here, but that's, uh, that's what we're here to do. We'll start off with a bit of a warm-up, you know, 20 minutes jogging up and down, stretching. Usually we'll go into some fairly intense cardio workouts, and then we'll go into an upper body circuit. So we'll do that with the upper body, and then we'll do that with the core, be 45 minutes on each. And then we'll finish with some neck on the neck machines, and then have a good stretch, a bit of a massage, and then head home after that, so two and a half hours a day. But the most important thing with training the neck is the safeguarding of it because it is a small group of muscles and you can't just load it up with heavy weight. At Le Mans they can generate up to, up to sort of 3G lateral G um, and also there's um, sort of braking and accelerating G which can be up to about 2.5G as well. Obviously when you're in the car it's not, you're not just getting the G-force you know, 90 degrees from the, you know, the left and 90 degrees from the right, it's coming from all different angles so this one for example is a sort of left um, back, so it works all the different different angles. The most common injury depends. Um, it can be um, anything from buttock to, to um, lower leg cramps. It could be to spasms in the head and neck. It can be into sort of the shoulders as well. Bad ergonomics can actually shorten a driver's ability to stay in the car. With the setup we've got at Ford, we've been able to eliminate that part. Nutrition is individualised, but generally speaking it's about the timing of your macronutrients, which are your carbohydrates, protein and fats. What we're trying to avoid is spikes in insulin levels. On average they will lose uh, anything up to kind of three litres in a three hour stint. So they ideally want to take on about 12 litres of water uh, over a 24 hour period. So that's where it's important that you don't have a mix too heavy in water or too heavy in electrolyte, because it's all about maintaining that balance. If they're driving on average eight hours out of the 24, the rest of the time ideally would be sleeping. Um, doesn't always happen. Um, and again, it's quite difficult for the drivers to switch off. You're not sleeping, you're always listening to the radio, uh, what the other drivers are saying, and try to hear if your car's still running. I'm oh, absolutely exhausted at the end. It takes me about four or five days to recover afterwards. You put so much into it. These days, the cars are so reliable, they're so quick. You just absolutely flat out. It's just a 24 hour sprint. This is the world's greatest race. When you get to the finish, you're lucky enough to be up on the podium. You, know, you look down and it's you know, 100,000 people all crowding onto the track and into the pit lane. You feel like an absolute rock star. And uh, I've had that view once and I'm determined to get up there again.